Good evening, everyone. Listen to this from Psalm 45, one of my favorite psalms. It's also called the wedding song. My heart is on fire, boiling over with passion. Bubbling up within me are these beautiful lyrics as a lovely poem to be sung for the king. Like a river bursting its banks, I'm overflowing with words, spilling out into this sacred story. Beautiful, beautiful, beyond the sons of men. Elegant grace pours out through every word you speak. Truly, God has anointed you, his favored one, from eternity. That's a psalm about the Lord Jesus, our bridegroom. And tonight we're going to be focus, focusing on Jesus. We're going to talk a lot about angels, but our focus has got to be in Jesus. You know, when Jesus stands before you, you'll never worship an angel. You'll never get lost in angel mania. When you focus your heart on the Lord Jesus, he is infinitely greater than angels. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. These Thursdays are highlights for my wife and I, and Candace will be joining me in a little bit and sharing some prophetic words she has received for those of you that are watching tonight. Uh, wherever you are around the world, UK, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and North America, and elsewhere, we welcome you. We thank you all. And a special thank you to those ministry partners that make this happen. We love you, partners, and we look forward to getting to know each of you better. And our next mentoring, our March mentoring session, we'll be sending you that date very soon where we get on that Zoom call together and have some, some fun time. So, folks, we are so blessed, Candace and I, to be with you tonight. I'm personally thrilled to be alive after what I've gone through with COVID. I'm in week five, uh, actually week six. COVID is over, thank God. I am, I am COVID-free, but I have a lingering case of pneumonia, and that has uh, limited me. Uh, actually, uh, I drove a car for the first time in a month, two days ago. So that tells you how little I've even been out of the house. But God is with me. He has strengthened me. Angels are around me <laughs> and protecting me. And the healer himself, Yahweh Rapha, is my king and my Lord. So uh, before, we, uh, before we jump in, and, and I'm going to go pretty quick tonight, uh, with this lesson. I just want to remind you, if, if you appreciate these Thursday evening classes, we're going verse by verse through the book of Hebrews. It's going to take us some time, so be patient, but it will yield a sweet, pleasant fruit. If you have been blessed and you are, appreciate these Thursday evenings and the ministry of Passion and Fire, including the Passion Translation and our project that we're working on, I hope you'll jump over at the end of this session to passionandfire.com Hebrews. It's there on the bottom of the screen. It's really easy. Passion and Fire is the name of our ministry. And then just put a slash in the word Hebrews and join our team. Be a part of our ministry. And we invite you to be partners with us and check out that page and you'll see what that's all about. Okay. Chapter one, Hebrews. We're going to finish the first chapter tonight. Uh, next week, do not miss next week. Hebrews has four clear warnings. That's right, New Testament, grace book, but it has warnings. And we're going to talk about the first warning is not to let slip what we've already learned in Christ. So we'll talk about that next week. But today we're going to finish chapter one, starting in verse four. Jesus is infinitely greater or better than angels, for he inherited a name far greater than theirs. So as you can see, this word better or uh, greater is the word kriton. It's found 13 times in the book of Hebrews, the Greek word found 13 times in the book of Hebrews. So the book of Hebrews is about better, better things. If you want something better in 2021, this is the study you want to get into. God wants to bring you better things. And the way he starts out in Hebrews is to show us that Jesus is better than angels because he has a name 
far greater than theirs. Now, the name that he has inherited is not Kyrios. That's the Greek term that is found in the New Testament. Sadly, there is not a Greek counterpart to the Hebrew concept of the name of Yahweh or the name of Jesus. Kyrios in the Greek can mean uh, a wealthy landowner. It can mean a uh, influential person, a strong person. It actually has been used for demons, all right? So to, to put that name up against Jesus is, to me, it's lacking. But the Hebrew is the name Hashem or the name Yahweh. And uh, the name Yahweh, the great I am, we'll get into this a little deeper here tonight, but, but I want you to know that angels don't have that name. They're just called angels. Sorry, folks. I thought I had my phone off. It is now. The angels of God. There are 110 million angels around the throne of God. 110 million. You say, how did you know that? The Bible says in the book of Revelation that there are 10,000 times 10,000. That's 100 million. And thousand times thousands around his throne. That's 10 million. So there is at least 110 million angels around the throne of God. There's actually 10 ranks of angels. I don't have time to get into a deep study of angelology. It's one of the uh, one of the fields of theology is angelology. It's neglected and people get so concerned. If you talk about angels, oh no, everybody's going to go worship an angel if you talk about angels. No, the Bible talks about angels. An angel came to minister to Jesus. Jesus spoke about angels. Paul spoke about angels. John speaks about angels. So there's nothing taboo about you know, broaching this subject and stepping into a, a study of angelology. Uh, but there are 110 million at least angels around the throne and 10 concentric circles. And the highest ranking of the angels, the Ophanim, there's different ranks, Hebrew rankings of angels. And again, some other day, I'll have to go into the, the detail of all this. But in concentric circles like choir around the throne of God, the angelic host night and day worships him. Now that's the angels in the throne room. That doesn't count the angels on earth. That doesn't count the uh, messenger angels, the link angels that lock together, the warrior angels. There's all kinds of ranks and, and classifications of the angelic realm. There are, believe me, there are tons of angels in this universe. They are in your home right now. They are near you right now. I think it's a misnomer to say you have a guardian angel. Uh, and, and again, I just don't have the time to, to, to scripturally go through every single verse to prove these things. But I, I believe you have 60 angels around you. 60. And that's taken from the Song of Songs and the chariot of God the chariot of the Lord, the bridal chariot, where he has 60 mighty ones with swords strapped to their thigh to protect you and your bridegroom. Oh my. So the angelic host is all around you. And the problem is the angel mania. If we, if we get sidetracked with angels, instead of keeping our gaze on Jesus, if you can keep your gaze on Jesus and study angels, it's fascinating. OK, it's a fascinating topic, but you have with you right now angels from God sent to protect you. And we're going to end up with with some really powerful truths about angels this evening. But to say all of this, uh, you know, when Satan fell, he took, according to Revelation 12, he took a third of the angelic hosts, a third of the stars, which are often metaphors for angels. He took a third of heaven's host with him. That means two thirds are faithful to God. So you have twice as many holy angels, mighty ones. They're actually called uh, occasionally in the Old Testament, Elohim, as mighty ones of God. They are surrounding you. They are in the atmosphere. They with you when you drive your car. And I say amen to that. 
They are with your family and your loved ones. They are servants. They are attendants to the heirs of salvation. That's you and me. So these, uh, this vast number, who could number them really? This vast number of angels fill the universe. And they are great and they are mighty and there's different rankings. You have the archangels and then you have angelic hosts even below them. You have angels assigned specific geographical territories. There, nations have angels, churches have angels, ministries have angels. So there are specific assignments that angels have. Some of them are limited to a, a geographical territory and they will not leave that because that's the assignment God has given them. And to illustrate that, when Jacob came back into the promised land, he had two companies, two hosts of angels, two armies of angels, and they danced together, the dance of Mahanaim. And those two camps of angels, one was the, uh, the accompanying host of angels with Jacob, the patriarch, the promised seed. And the other were the angels stationed in the promised land. So when Jacob with his, <laughs> with his bodyguards came into the promised land where he was meant to be, the angelic host exploded. I mean, we think of the angels that came when Jesus was born. We can think of the angel that let Peter out of prison. Uh, there are New Testament examples of angels. And of course, there are angels that fell. And maybe another day we can get into the Nephilim and the, and the uh, Tartarus where there is a host of angels in chains of darkness even now, Second Peter tells us. And there's, there's, there's a lot of a vast study that we can make of angels. But the point is, Jesus is far greater. The name of Jesus is greater than the name of Raphael, Gabriel, or any angel. There's not one angel that has the name, the name as great as his. 196 times angels are mentioned. And they were often worshipped by people because when angels came, they were so beautiful. I just, was, I just finished Daniel chapter 8 where the angel Gabriel came to Daniel and Daniel passed out. He fell to the ground on his face. He uh, went unconscious. And it says after Gabriel left him, he was sick for days, physically ill, because of the, the power and the glory radiance that was surging through Gabriel in the presence of Daniel. He, he had to lay in bed for days, it says, before he could even get up and go back into his service. So... Uh, these angels are mighty, and they are powerful. And John almost worshipped one in Revelation. And, uh, it, you know, if you focus on Jesus, you can't worship an angel. Jesus is holy, and so are they, but no one can take his place. And the Jewish people really revered angels, even to this day. If you talk to a Jewish person uh, especially an observant Jew, about angels. They're going to light up. Did you know, and this is something many Christians don't know, that over 10,000 angels were on Mount Sinai when God gave the law to Moses. Listen, a host of angels, it says in, um, in Deuteronomy 33, 2, a huge host of angels in Psalm 68, 17, likewise, uh, these angels appeared with God coming down at Sinai, and they gave the law to Israel. So angels were instrumental in giving the Torah, the Torah, angels transmitted the Torah to Israel. Many people don't realize that. And you can find that in Acts 7.53, Galatians 3.19, Likewise, many believers don't realize that the last book of the Bible was given by an angel. Yeah, you ought to read Revelation 1, verse 1. It says, God gave it to his son, Jesus, who gave it to an angel who gave it to John. So an angel transmitted the law in, uh, in Exodus, the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, an angel was a mediator or a uh, you know, a part carrying the, the revelation to John. 
And no doubt that angel stayed with John there in Patmos and interpreted and helped John unravel that book. And sometimes I think we need angels to help us understand that book today, don't we? So um, angel mania will disappear when Jesus draws near. That's what I wrote down. Angel mania will disappear when Jesus draws near. God has never said to any angel, I'm reading verse 5, what he said to Jesus, you are my favored son, today I have fathered you. No angel ever called God Father, Abba. Jesus was fathered, of course, the virgin birth, but uh, many scholars believe that this verse and the next one is in reference to the resurrection ascension hyphenate that word, resurrection, ascension, that that action of being raised from the dead and then ascending on high, exalted, that that was the fathering that God gave Jesus mentioned in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5. And this is quoted from Psalm 2, verse 7. Uh, God never said to any angel what he said to Jesus, you are my favored son, today I have fathered you. So, I will be a father to him, God says, and he will be a son to me. What a mystery. There's a father-son relationship inside the Trinity. Every action of the Trinity, every activity of the Trinity, flows from a father-son relationship. That's deep. That's a mystery. Don't think because you're hearing my words in English that you understand this. What profound mystery that when God speaks to you, when love pours out on you, when he visits a worship service, when he pours out his spirit upon a people in revival, it flows out of a father-son relationship. The Trinity is all about father-son. So then everything God is doing is to raise up sons and daughters and include them inside the triune glory to bring us into that essence of the triune glory, Father, Son, Spirit, and the Bride. Mystery of mysteries. So when he brought his firstborn son into the world, he said these words, let all my angels bow down before him and kiss him in worship. Now, most translations will say, let all the angels worship him, and that's accurate. However, proskuneo, the Greek word, word for worship. Pro skuneo. Pro is toward. Skuneo is to bow down and kiss. To to bow toward and kiss. That's what New Testament concept of worship is. It's humility and affection. The true New Testament definition of worship is humility, bowing down before him, and kissing him. Intimacy. That's what worship is all about. Have you worshiped Jesus lately? We don't do that to angels. We don't bow down and kiss angels. No way, Jose, that's not going to happen. But we're going to humble our heart and adore, adore the Son of God. Over 49 years ago, I made that commitment to follow Jesus Christ part of the Jesus movement. I've never got over that. My wife and I made that vow for the last breath of our life. We will bow down and we will kiss the son. We will go where he sends us, speak what he gives us to speak and do whatever he asks us to do. And he's asked us to do some things that, oh my, that have broken my heart open, have humbled me, et cetera, et cetera. But that's what worship is. Okay. Now verse seven, about his angels, God says, I will make my angels swift winds. Winds, swift winds. You know, I felt angelic presence as a, as a wind going by me in a closed room. I have felt in worship services and at times when I'm ministering and times when I'm just worshiping him in a gathering, in a corporate gathering, I felt the wind blow upon me. I feel his presence. And the angelic presence with the wind, the breath of God. Uh, So my ministers, I make them fiery flames. Now the Greek word for minister here, um, letorgios, which means those who read the liturgy 
or those who are priests. So he makes his ministers or his priests fiery flames. Now, contextually, it's angels that are the swift messengers. And uh, the ministers of fiery flames can be both angels and us. How we need ministers of fire that carry the torch of God, that have been torched by an angel. <laughs> Not touched by an angel, torched by an angel. We need ministers and priests that have been anointed and carry the flame of God. Send the fire, Lord. The great Salvation Army prayer, send the fire. Where's the fire of God, Lord? Send it to the earth today. Now, these flames of fire, we often associate with power and judgment, but they're also the, it's also the flame to ignite our heart in passion for the Lord. Verse 8, but about his son, he called him, listen, about his son, this is the father speaking of his son, Jesus. He called him God. The father calling Jesus, the son, God. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. This is quoted from Psalm 110. Your throne, O God, endures forever, and you will rule your kingdom with a scepter of justice and righteousness. Now, the word righteousness uh, in the Greek text can mean justice. Justice and righteousness are like two sides of one coin. And many people are, are like righteousness. They're bent on righteousness. And others are tilted somewhat towards social justice. They just want justice. We have all these causes for justice. And, and God's throne is the foundation of his throne is, is justice and righteousness. But, you know, justice without righteousness, you will quickly get in a ditch of man's opinions and a political detour, cul-de-sac. And righteousness without justice, you will become self-righteous and you'll not care about the needs of others. We need both justice and righteousness. Can I get a Zoom amen? Can I get a Facebook amen on that one? We need justice and righteousness. That's the foundation of God's throne. And Jesus will rule forever with those two themes. So the angels are spirits, but he is the son. Uh, his throne will have no end. Jesus rules his kingdom with justice and righteousness. And, and the lamb, Jesus is ruling as a lamb on the midst of the throne right now. The center of the universe is not uh, your, it's not Jerusalem or your city or your nation. The center of the universe is the lamb on a throne. Everything revolves governmentally around that center. Now, verse nine, you have cherished righteousness and hated lawlessness. You have cherished or you have loved righteousness and hated iniquity. For this reason, God, your God has anointed, which is the word for Christ, anointed, the anointed one. Your God has anointed you and poured out the oil of bliss. The oil of bliss. Come on, everybody. You need the oil of gladness, the oil of bliss. It can be the oil of rejoicing. It's the oil of ecstasy. God has anointed Jesus with that oil of ecstasy beyond anyone else in the universe. Here's the key for loving righteousness and hating sin. Get anointed with that oil. If you leave half of this verse out, you're going to get weird. You're going to get weird on us. Okay? You're going to love righteousness and hate iniquity. Well, how do you do that? Get anointed. Get anointed with the oil of bliss, the oil of gladness, the oil of joy, the oil of Christos, the Christ. Let the anointing of Jesus come over you, and you will... Never want to do something that, that will be unrighteous or will be uh, iniquitous or rebellious or wayward. All you want is the righteousness of God when you get soaked in that oil because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and bliss or joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can I get another amen, a second amen here online? So that's the key. If you want to love what God loves and hate what God hates, 
get his anointing. Let the oil of bliss and joy come over you right now. Let it pour over you the sweet, fragrant, warm oil of his presence, the Christos living within you, the Christ within you, the Christ of glory within. Let that Christ anointing within you pour into every thought, every attitude, every motive of your heart. And believe me, you will love righteousness and hate iniquity. So Jesus is better than any angel. He's got a better name. He's the son. They are servants. Uh, he's uncreated. They are creatures. Uh, he's called the son. Uh, they are called servants. Uh, he's exalted in resurrection glory. They've never been resurrected because they've never joined uh, other than the Nephilim and fell. They've never joined humanity. Angels never address God as father. The son is worshipped by angels. We don't worship angels. The angels worship Jesus. Verse 10, he called him Lord, saying, Lord, you formed the earth in the beginning. If Jesus formed the earth in the beginning, then he was without beginning. This is taken from Psalm 102, verses 23 to 27, a powerful passage. I was soaking in that today. Psalm 102, 23 to 27. With your own hands, you crafted the cosmos. They will both one day disappear. Heaven and earth, both will one day disappear, but you remain. I love, you know, occasionally I like the King James wording. Thou remainest. Thou remainest. I love that. They will disappear, but you remain. You have a God that remains. People walk out of your life. You lose a job. You lose a loved one. You lose so many things in life. You know, sometimes it just seems like life is, is just losing stuff. We lose our, our, our dignity at times. We lose our self-love at times. But he remains. They will all fade like a worn out garment. They will all be changed like clothes and you will fold them up and put them away. But you are, I am. You are the I am. You never change years without end. This is a worship song. Somebody's going to write a worship song from these verses right here. The worship of our heart is the heavens and cosmos will disappear one day, but you will wrap them, fold them away like, like worn out clothes. But Lord, you remain forever. You are the I am. You never change years without end. I love that. Yeah, Karen, let's get some more of that oil of bliss. I'm with you. <laughs> you know, I was thinking how we all change. Every year we change. Get uh, For some of us, we get a little grayer. For the rest of you, you get a little older every year. And things change. Our jobs change. Our careers change. Our society and culture changes. Our church changes. There's so many changes around us. And we're in a rapid season of change. Listen, here's the one constant. Here's the one thing, the anchor for your soul. You never change, Lord, years without end. Lord, you never change. Isn't that a comfort? He remains when all else fades and is folded away. Verse 13, we're going to wrap it up here, and Candace will be joining me. God has never said this to any of, his, any of his angels. Take your seat next to me at my right hand. God never put the angels at his right hand. He put his son there. Until I force your whispering enemies, that's the Aramaic word for enemy, whispering slanderer, to be a footstool for your feet. Placing the feet upon your enemy is a figure of speech, a uh, biblical figure of speech for triumph. It's a gesture of, of conquering, of triumph. And God is saying to his son, Jesus, you're going to reign with me until I force your enemies to become a footstool for your feet. Now, let me say a quick few things about this. Number one, all of Christ's enemies are not going to be converted. So those of you that are universalists and inclusionists, listen. Not all of Christ's enemies will be converted, demons and humans, but all will be conquered. All will be conquered. And I, I, want, I want to say that God is going to do this through us. Christ is going to conquer all his enemies, make them a footstool, but he's going to do it through you and through me. We have a role to play in rising in triumph with Christ. 
Now, verse 14, we'll end with this. What role then do the angels have? Okay, so if, since Christ is better than the angels and seven Old Testament quotations, Paul, uh, I'm going to say Paul as the author. Paul takes seven Old Testament scriptures and applies it to Christ being greater than angels. Nothing could be clearer. The angelic hosts serve God. It says the angels are spirit messengers sent by God. So God sends them to us to serve those who are about to inherit salvation. The angels are our servants. Angels are our attendants. They come to minister to us. That's the Greek word from which we get the word deacon. <laughs> They are deacons. They serve. That's fantastic. What a wonder. Right now, wherever you're watching from, angels are near you. The presence of God. He has sent them to you. They're portrayed as our attendants, that they strengthen us. And I've had an experience where I was strengthened at one time where I had an angelic encounter where I was strengthened by an angel. I had just come back from, I believe it was Indonesia, uh, was exhausted, and I had to go immediately into a conference. I spoke that night, but I went to bed saying, God, I don't think I can even do this tomorrow. You have to strengthen me. And that night I had a beautiful encounter. And the next morning, wow, whoo, I was caffeinated. I'll just say that. I was strengthened by the Lord. They will strengthen you. They will come to serve every faithful follower of the Lamb. But the implication, not only did they accompany us, but the implication is those that are going to be saved. In other words, your unbelieving family that you have prayed for, release the angelic presence into their home, over their lives. Because uh, God sends angels to all those to minister and serve those who will inherit salvation. Not occasionally, but constantly. You're secure, not only in the hands of Jesus, but in the presence of the angelic realm. Angels deliver you many times from death. I know that time is running out, or I could give you experience after experience my wife and I have had of angelic rescue. We were rescued out of a flooding river, uh, lost our, our, our three months supplies, nearly our lives, almost drowned. And we, to this day, still believe that those out-of-nowhere people that came on little tiny canoes to rescue us, we still believe it was the angels of God. Angels protect you from danger. And I have a list in my notes, partners will get this, of all the references where angels protect you from danger. Angels carry you at death into heaven. When your eyelids close for the last time and the death rattle comes out of your chest, angels carry you into your heavenly inheritance. And that's found in Luke 16, 22. And I, I want to kind of leave you with this, that you're one with Christ. Why do the angels serve you? You? Why do angels minister to you? Because you are like Jesus to them. You are one with Jesus Christ. And when they minister to you, it's as though they are ministering to the Lord himself. Because he lives in you. The Christ on the throne is the Christ in your life, in your heart right now. So when the angels come to minister to you, <clears throat> they do it gladly. They serve, they, they strengthen, they accompany you because it's as though they're with Jesus and serving him. The angels of God are sent from heaven to learn from us. Now, this may be new to you, but listen, the, you are a teacher of the angelic. You see, angels have no concept of grace because they never fell. Can you imagine unfallen angels serving fallen, redeemed people? <laughs> what a glorious. This, this will just cause you to rejoice and praise God when you really get this. That Jesus is greater than the angelic realm. And angels sent by God are all around you 
because you look like Jesus in their eyes. And you teach them lessons of wisdom and grace. Ephesians 3.15 says that you instruct the angels of the mysteries of God. The grace and wisdom of God in your life instructs the angelic realm. So they like they, they come to school when they come to your house. <laughs> they enroll in college when they come to, to be with you because you're going to teach them. You see, the church is the university of angels and every believer is a professor. Teach them well. Let your life be an example of what God can do in grace in a human life and show them the wisdom and grace of God pouring through you. Candace is going to come and, and join us. Um, <clears throat> and I hope you, you jotted down that uh, website. Uh, we'll put it up here on, on the bottom of the screen again, but it's passionandfire.com. I don't want to squeeze you out, it's baby. Okay. Right. Passionandfire.com slash Hebrews. I told my wife, she is so gorgeous tonight. I love that, <laughs> that so um, really sapphire blue she's got on tonight. So. Uh, Candace, thanks for being a part of my life and ministry. And I know you've got some prophetic words to share yes. with us. So anyway, isn't that good? And to think that he still has pneumonia. So if you can just pray for him, uh, that he'll get rid of that pneumonia. And even when he doesn't feel so good, he's a great teacher. <laughs> so thankful to be God here and to strength. hear all that you taught tonight. It was just so good. And uh, I just want to start off right where you ended. Okay. That uh, where the, the angels want to look into what God is doing in our lives. Isn't that something? That's so awesome. First Peter 1.12 says, The gospel contains wonderful mysteries that even the angels long to get a glimpse of it. So uh, that's, that's such a wonderful truth. Fascinating. Fascinating to think that angels are wanting to learn from us. But, you know, I was asked by a, a board of women if I would join their board. And uh, I said, well, what's your ministry about? And they said it was about angels. And uh, so I had to tell them I couldn't be on the board because it just it was just focusing on angels alone. And uh, I told them your focus really has to be on Jesus uh, because that's the most important thing. That's the central thing. You can't just have one thing or the other in the in the Bible. You have to have the whole counsel of God. You can't just single out one or the other. And Jesus is greater than anything uh, that we've ever experienced Amen or ever will. That. So we love you, Lord. anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. If you're stuck on one place in the Bible, get the whole counsel of God and it's and make Jesus central in your life, whatever it is that you're doing. So verse five, for God has never said, to any angel, what he said to Jesus, you are my favored son. Today I have fathered you. And if you look in the footnote there in the TPT, the words say, I have fathered you can be translated every day I begat you. And I felt like the Lord just said, in a sense, God wants to begat you every day anew. He wants to birth you anew and give you a new beginning with the new mercies that he has. So if you'll just let him, he wants to send you off every day on a, on a new path, the right path. And uh, he doesn't have that type of relationship with the angels. But you have a chance, if you'll just let him, uh, have a chance to have a relationship with him like that. And uh, you may hear secrets for your day that you never expected. It may change the whole course of your life. In fact, I heard the Lord say, someone listening is going to start doing this, start waiting before they get up, waiting to hear what the Lord has to say about their day. It doesn't have to be a long time if you don't have the time, but just let him start your day. Let him kiss you. And uh, Proverbs 8.34 says, if you wait at wisdom's doorway, longing to hear a word for every day, Joy will break forth within you as you listen for what I'll say. So someone listening right now, is, it's literally going to change your life just to take wow. a few minutes. Uh, you're, if you're hurried, if you have the time, take, of course, take as much as you can because the angels don't have this. We have this available and you're going to be amazed at some of the things that he tells you. It's going to change your life. Believe me. Wow. Come if on, this is a word for somebody. wake up and say, Lord, what are you saying? Or maybe you had a dream or whatever. He constantly surprises me with what he says when I wake up in the morning. And, the, of course, the dreams that I get as well. So the next one uh, is verse 6. 
Let all my angels bow down before him and kiss him and worship. Amen. Of course, when he came into the world, when Jesus came into the world, the first thing that we hear about are the angels uh, with their song, singing uh, to the shepherds and worshiping. And so worship is just a, so important to God, and it should be to us. If you're not worshiping at home out loud, I think you're missing out. Uh, maybe you think your voice is not so good, but it it connects your heart to God when you worship him in spirit and in truth. And I, I once I was walking through the airport just singing at the top of my voice and thought, oh, no, I shouldn't be doing this. And I heard the <laughs> Lord came. No, I love it. Go ahead. And so <laughs> I feel like the Lord's saying oh, to you, yeah. I love it. Go ahead. You Come may on. not like your voice, but when start you, in the there's shower. somebody that's going to start shower. singing <laughs> that you consider your voice horrible, but God loves it song of song says that your voice is sweet so uh that's right your voice is sweet so take that horrible voice that you think <laughs> is horrible but god wants to hear your voice it will release the emotions of your heart the lord said to me and it's going to release you to another level of intimacy with him you can wait till everybody's gone he doesn't say you have to do it when everybody's there if, if you're afraid to do that but just start using your voice and even praying out loud at, at home, it's really great to connect your spirit that way with God and uh, see what he releases to you. It's, the Lord told me it's going to change your life and your intimacy. Wow. Verse seven, and about his angel, he said, his angels, he says, I make my angels swift winds and my ministers fiery flames. So I see the Lord making somebody a fiery, passionate preacher. Come on. I saw a notebook full of, of notes and uh, Come on. The Lord says, it's time to pull that notebook out and quit hiding your gift. God is going to make you a fiery flame, fire. a fiery Come preacher. On. Catch it. It's start start Catch using your gift. Uh -huh. Don't be wasting your gift. And uh, he's going to show you how to use it. Maybe you just start in a small home group or, you know, some of you are open, some of you are not. But if you could do a home group, that would be great. Or maybe he wants you to do an online group, but the Lord said it's going to be a success. You're going to be a fiery Come on, fire flame one. for God. So verse nine, for you have cherished righteousness and detested lawlessness. For this reason, God, your God has anointed you and poured out the oil of bliss on you more than any of your friends. And uh, I love this promise. Uh, if you cherish righteousness and detest uh, lawlessness, God will pour out joy on you. Isn't that great? Yeah. We all want joy. And I, Heard the Lord say someone listening has allowed an unhealthy relationship come uh -oh. into your life. Listen up. And it's not righteousness or justice to you. It's not just for you. And the Lord say it's time to ditch that relationship and look for a better one. Come on. I'm just going to be your mama here and just be honest <laughs> with you what I heard. Choose wisely. Because you haven't allowed an unholy alliance into your life. And it's going to ca cause you to lose your joy. But the Lord wants your joy back so he says just get rid of that one you can do it ever so kindly but uh choose choose god i remember having a relationship with a guy and uh i was before sitting in his before me. i married him and i heard the lord say this isn't good for you and i actually just said you know what i just heard the lord tell me that this is not his relationship it's not for me and I actually just got up and walked out of his house. He, I was in his, he brought wow. me in his car, but I walked home. I thought, nope, this is not right. I'm leaving. That's so because God and you. the angels <laughs> had to lead you to me. That's right. That's right. For yeah. sure. So I'm going to stop I'm glad there. You, you ditched him. Yeah. Well, folks, we've had a fun time tonight. And uh, this, this really energizes me to be with you, our friends and uh, partners. It just, I, I get excited and, I feel healing coming into me. But I want to pray now that the angels of heaven will accompany you in tangible ways. Uh, I was driving late one night. Uh, we were going to Bible college, leaving uh, we were probably a five, 600 mile drive. Uh, and Candace and our two, we had two kids at that point. Actually one, we only had charity at that point. Uh, they were asleep in the car and I started falling asleep and all of a sudden there was a man in front of the, in, in the highway that stopped me and said, you're falling asleep. You need to go to the next hotel. There's an exit mm -hmm. one mile up. It's open and you can spend the night there. 
you know, I, it, it was like two or three in the morning, two in the morning. And I pull in that exit to the hotel. Sure enough, the, uh, what do you call it? The desk clerk, he was there helping somebody else check in. And he said, yeah, I'll go ahead and check you in too. And then I get into the room, lie down on bed, quickly fall asleep. But the thought that hit me, that was not a person. That was an angel. Angels have saved our lives, have oh, saved our family yes. from death and have ministered to us. I welcome the angelic in my home. I'm not going to worship angels. Colossians uh, chapter uh, two warns us about mm -hmm. the worship of angels. We're not going to worship angels. No, not even come close to that. We're going to worship Jesus with all of our heart. But I'm telling you, the angels, if God has angels for me, I want them. Mm -hmm. I want everything he has. I want every gift he has, right. including the, yeah. the angels. I'll yeah, take we'll, the ones you we don't will. want. A, I'll take them. We've had a lot not, of them not say Not the this. fallen ones, the good yeah. ones. But Messengers I, of God. I just really believe God wants to fill your home with the singing of angels, with the joy of the Lord, the sweet oil of bliss, the gladness that comes upon your, your family, your heart, and all this cranky, bitter, you know, contentious period that we're in, that that just gets washed away with the presence of God. And the angels will bring the presence of God into our home. So, Father, I thank you for my precious friends, our friends right now, each one viewing this from wherever they are, whatever day they're watching. I ask that, Lord, that you would send dispatch reinforcements, ha, reinforcements to every home. Lord, to go to workplaces with us, to go shopping with us, to go through our relationship trials with us yes, Lord. and to bring a new release of the presence of God. We welcome the strengthening angels. We welcome, Lord, the warring angels, the heavenly host that do battle not only over nations, but over families and churches. We welcome the true heavenly, holy Angels of heaven that confess Jesus Christ is Yahweh before the throne of God. Let the angelic host partner with us and we partner with them in the great uh, mission fields of the earth. And in this great era of time of the worldwide harvest. Equip us, strengthen us, teach us, enlighten us. Give us eyes that see and ears that hear. The voice behind us when it speaks. This is the way. Walk in it. Clarify, cl clarify our, our, our hearing, Lord. Let it be. Let our seeing be 3D. High definition. And let our hearing be supernatural. And let our activities, Lord, uh, let it be filled with your presence. Yes. Help us, Lord. Help us to honor Jesus above everything and every distraction, every teaching and doctrine we've ever heard. Let Jesus be enthroned above it all, including the angels. We pray it Yes, Lord. in Jesus' name. My friends, what a wonderful time with you. Uh, this would be a great time just to hop over if you've appreciated our, our journey together and and thank you for those who prayed for my healing. Yes, oh, thank gosh. You. Uh, even today, you know, I had global leaders that you would you many of you would know their names that that texted me and said how are you doing we are praying for you and uh, it just melts me it, it totally mm -hmm. has changed my life I, I feel like i have a brand new life uh, and a brand new wife <laughs> <laughs> when you get you know when you get filled with the zeal of life itself of pleasing god it changes you and i I can tell you he's humbled me. He's made me desperate in more ways than one. And I'm so grateful for our, our praying friends and our partners. Oh, sweet partners. We love you. Kisses from our heart to yours. Thank you so yes, much. Thank you. So be a part. Step in. Uh, help us take this torch to the ends of the world, to the English-speaking world, and, and bring the Passion Translation Project to a completion. Like I said, I finished Daniel 8. Uh, hopefully I can start uh, Daniel chapter nine next week. And uh, God bless you, friends. Passionandfire.com. 
slash Hebrews. Head on over. God bless you, friends. We love you. You're amazing. See you next week, next Thursday. Yep. See you next Wednesday. Bye, Thursday, Wednesday. Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> <laughs>